around the world from Vienna to Carolina. She's a sticky finger touch up from Berlin down to Belize. Take you for a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Steal their soul in South Korea. Make it let it cook right on the from the Red Sea to Greenland. They'll be singing the blues. Well, they never Arkansas. The world is Carmen San Diego. She go from Nashville to Norway, out there to Zimbabwe, Chicago to Czechoslovakia and back. Well, she'll ransack Pakistan and run a scan in Scandinavia. Then she'll stick them up down under and go big pocket worth. She was the missing misdemeanor when she stole the beans from Lima. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego. My name is Gary Butterfield. And coming to you from Ohio, this is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Adaptation Decay, the Patreon bonus show where we talk about how video games have been adapted into other media. Yeah, and my little geography call out there at the start was because this episode is about Carmen Pixels Sandiego. Oh. It, 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 <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> takes place in Ohio. Mansfield, yep, Speed it, it, City, it, baby. <laughs> takes place outside Cole's house. <laughs> <laughs> the just Adam Sandler just being like, wah, wah. I'm cool. Um, yeah, I'm cool. Look at this. Look at this supermodel who thinks I'm attractive. <laughs> um, speaking of supermodels that I find attractive, Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that we're not alone in that, that I'm not alone in that and that we, and that we can get it out of the way. I, I was, I'm actually going to go real to bat on just what a beautiful, classy lady the chief is a little bit later. Oh, of course. Yeah, like Carmen San Diego herself, sexy mystery. Yes, Car- Carmen in the sheets, chief in the streets, like one hundred percent. Yeah, the <laughs> like it is just a uh, you know double trouble on weekends. Oh, um, <laughs> street <laughs> sheets, <laughs> street sheets. Um, yeah, we're talking about Carmen San Diego. Yeah, uh, a couple different adaptations of Carmen San Diego. Yeah, so uh, we're doing two things. We are doing where in the world is Carmen San Diego, and where on earth is Carmen San Diego kind of yep. a split episode because I don't know. I didn't feel like doing two, you know, I, I don't know about you. I didn't feel like doing two episodes about a game show. I, I watched an extra episode of the game show this morning. Oh yeah. Breakfast, though, just because I find it in really comforting. And oh, it's so, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- this like, is the most intensely nostalgic thing we've covered. I think for yeah, me. there's a bunch of them on YouTube in case anyone wants to join us. In this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, also just to look at different ways, you know, we weren't going to do another adaptation decay on Carmen San Diego in the future. No. Um, on the cartoon, like unless there's like a movie or something. Right. You know, then I could I could see doing it. But oh, uh, this kind of made the most sense. I'm positive there's like a that there is a series of like straight to DVD Carmen San Diego, San Diego animated movies. For sure. It could be. Yeah. Like, I mean, like a big budget movie. Oh, OK. Yeah. You know. With like uh, Idris Elba as Double Trouble, <laughs> with, with Idris Elba as Carmen <laughs> San Diego, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> this is, it's gone too far. <laughs> Will the diversity police never shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> In the interest of progress, we have replaced this Latina woman with a black <laughs> man, with a with a gigantic black Englishman. <laughs> the um, the uh, I would I would fucking watch the hell out of that like especially if they didn't comment on it at all or if there's just like everyone just said their lines but there's a beat before they react to carmen san diego whenever carmen san diego does anything boy i'm going to, I'm going to the you know, stolen the chocobo you know or whatever like because because idris elba has a ridiculously thick accent when he's not acting <laughs> yeah. you know and then everyone just goes like okay we'll get you carmen <laughs> get away you slippery thief bring you know? back george washington's wooden teeth yeah, just, just like, <laughs> One, oh, I got your key for you, dude. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> just, uh, like, uh, yeah. <sighs> Any, anywho, um, D- Carmen does, San Diego. Does anybody not know Carmen San Diego? Like, like what, what this is based off of? Oh, pro- probably. Like, I think that, um, you know, there's there's a bunch of edutainment game, you know, kind of titles that most people are familiar with. And I think number one is probably Oregon Trail. Yes. Oregon Trail has the most ubiquity. Mm-hmm. Number two, I think before Carmen San Diego, San Diego, and this could just be like scuttlebutt and like word on the street, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of talking to people, going out and, and doing man on the street interviews here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is uh, I think that like something like Number Muncher might have kind of number two prominence. Mm-hmm. I think like San Diego. Math like, Blaster, yeah. Yeah, Math Blaster is really up there. Uh-huh. Number Muncher, Math Blaster, and stuff like that. Carmen San Diego 
felt like a more advanced form of edutainment game to me. Yes. Um, this could have to do with my age, though, too. Like, by the time this came out, you know, near the, the later entries of... Uh, well, I mean, I guess it was like when the first one came out. Definitely would have been in the pocket. Like, this this is a long-running series, so yeah. who knows? Um, yeah. But I, I can imagine some people not familiar with uh, with Carmen Sandiego, the game, for sure. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, you know, it just... TV is going to be more common. Lots of people watch PBS. This game show is on PBS. And, you know, if you just sang the first three notes of this to somebody yeah. who's about 30, they would probably finish the song in its and entirety. In general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say like, code word. Yeah, the, the, um, but I mean, the game, like not everyone has played the game. Right, right. Uh, I, I guess my point. And it, it's a it's a real big deal in the world of uh, edutainment. Yes. Things. So the TV show we're talking about uh, before we kind of get into, I mean, I guess we should talk a little bit about the the game. We should, the, yeah, the computer game. So um, this is actually the the game show is actually a remarkably good adaptation, yeah, of the uh, of the of the computer game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the computer game started out um, the very first entry. Carmen San Diego was just one of many criminals. Mm-hmm. She was just kind of the breakout star, right, and leader. But there was just like a bunch of criminals, and uh, I didn't know this until I was doing research for the show. Did you know that the first, uh, like the first several like releases of Carmen Sandiego, the the computer game, just came with a world almanac? No, I like, did the not. The current world almanac. That's like how great. cute is that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, I just, God, I love edutainment. Oh yeah, I mean, like, th- 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 this entire thing from front to back is absurdly wholesome. Yeah, uh, from <laughs> from conception all the way up to, um, yeah, the the the, yeah. the very last word they'll be saying. Like, this is all going to be very very uh constructive positive edifying yep as as a, as a show for sure so like yep. the 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 version of the computer game is almost because you have that world almanac it's almost like a it's the same kind of similar structure to the game show not exactly but kind of similar mm-hmm. structure to the game show but it's almost just like a guided learning experience yeah like it's almost just randomly directing you to look up stuff in the almanac mm-hmm. until eventually you have some of these factoids memorized and understand you know, stuff about these other countries. Yes. Uh, the conceit is that you are an agent who is working for the Acme Detective Agency, uh, mm-hmm. trying to hunt down agents of this um, kind of guild of calamitous intent, Vile, uh, is yep. what it's called. Um, and, you, you know, you go to a city and you see like a list of the connecting flights, like where, where it could go. Uh, and you go to these different places and they say, oh, I, I, you, I, you go to the bank and like, yes, I saw her changing her money for francs. And then, yep. <laughs> you know, just other clues like that. And then you're just guessing which of the, uh, which, which of the three cities that, you know, are available you can go to, to get more clues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So it's probably um, like geography and a little bit of history, uh, world yeah. culture kind of stuff. Yeah, like a little a little bit of everything. It's not yeah. strictly a geography game. Right. Um, and that's like something that I kind of forgot. I always thought of this as just like a geography game, and that's mm-hmm. not really the case. Yeah. Um the uh and this is this is the uh, the initial game. This is the one that these things are based on, even mm-hmm. though later Carmen Sandiego go would go through time, space, North Dakota, yep. like all the places. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> you know, um eventually carmen sandiego would get up some some additional bullshits yeah it always bugged me that it was where in time is carmen sandiego and very clearly it should be it should be when in time is carmen sandiego mm. she can be both mm. okay yeah that's like right. right now we are we are at a place in time that's yeah you know it's we're, we're at a where in time yeah um yeah, you know, but yeah, I think I you know when in time also makes sense <laughs> i think that but also if i remember that game which i didn't that was that one came a little bit later. I didn't play very much of that. Mm-hmm. I think the where is super important to that game. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not like just like oh, I'm in this year. It's like I'm in ancient Greece. Yes. You know, so it's it's it is more about the place. But I, oh. I get I get your get your point. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just throwing grammar nerd on top of history and geography nerd. You know. Yeah. Different it's... different kind of entertainment. Yeah. 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 No, I I mean like <laughs> pedant man grammar pedant muncher <laughs> like or whatever you know yeah and it's just one muncher that goes around munching on the other munchers when they get things wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pac Man versus I, I was I was only vaguely angry at the universe I wasn't correcting any one individual person no I know yeah. <laughs> just uh, just imagining the entertainment game that might lead to such okay yes um, no, no. but the, yeah th- this was all kinds of my shit like the like when you when we would go to the main branch of our library they had you know max out and i would play carmen San, San diego deluxe mm-hmm. when uh when i got frustrated with uh with prince of persia yeah the broderbund classics mm-hmm. both of them 
Um, for some reason, yeah, Broderbun. <laughs> like, like had a bit, had a big lock on that whole elementary school. I know. Right? Um, my most of my playing computer games that were edutainment based computer games was when I was in middle school, and uh, Carmen San Diego was a part of it. But me and my friends mostly played um, Number Muncher and Oregon Trail. Yes. Uh, primarily, we did play some Carmen San Diego, and then once I got to a little bit older, and there was a computer lab, people were taking, you know, uh wolfenstein from home yes and installing them on them and then we just like played wolfenstein instead obviously you know yeah it was no longer about uh about being educated at mm-hmm. all um you know we're just getting educated on the history of world war ii <laughs> right you're bj blaskowitz mm-hmm. um the uh but I, you know, I, did, I did play a good amount of this i watched um an obscene amount of the tv show though oh holy shit like, like it this was, was this yeah every it was day. always on like, right after school yep yeah five o'clock Something to real quick, too, before we move off Broderbun, just because I, I have all my tabs open. Uh-huh. Um, I just found this out that Broderbun has a game called Captain Goodnight and the Islands of Fear. What? Which is fucking awesome and a good band name. <laughs> like, I love this. Captain Goodnight. Okay. Captain Goodnight and the Islands of Fear is a 1985 action game by Broderbun. That is really good. Yeah, I love it. Like, I'm, I'm just like, that phrase, the, you know, set of words. I was like, uh-huh. this, is, this is the good shit. Oh, it's extremely blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Good uh good job, Broderbund. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um yeah, just Captain Goodnight. <laughs> That's great. Yep. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh but I watched a lot of the show. It came on every day. Mm-hmm. Um my friend Austin would come over after school and we would watch it. Mm-hmm. Um kind of early on and then eventually like would move on to watching Simpsons at that at that time slot. Like right, I remember right. it was on at five and that was a turned out to be a very hotly contested time slot once the Simpsons uh, kind of syndication started. Oh, of course. Yeah. And Simpsons yeah. is going to win, you know, yeah. obviously by default. Yeah. Um, the Carmen San Diego was, was always a little bit unique among quiz shows aimed at kids for me because it was primarily a way to learn by watching the kids either get it right or mess up. Like mm-hmm. I very rarely actually like it just intrinsically knew the answers to the questions that were out there, but I was like really hungry to learn about it. Mm-hmm. you know um, yeah i didn't know i didn't know any of this stuff yeah <laughs> and like when I, I was playing along with the episode we watched and i mm-hmm. you know for this kids show like you know, a little less than half maybe <laughs> of the, these things like yeah. i don't you know like sometimes there, there'd be a real slam dunk clue in there uh-huh uh, that they well, would give you up but every once well, in a while you, you quote like, oh. accidentally picked an episode that is mostly about portland so it's totally an accident because it doesn't turn into portland until at the end <laughs> you're right you know that's where yeah. she ends up so i was just clicking around um, the, a bunch of these are on youtube because i told you i watched another one this morning right um but the big problem is they're all like shitty you know antenna tv rips yeah so like, v- it, vhs tapes of antenna tv digitized yeah, poorly yeah the sound is very bad yes so i was i was literally just clicking around them until i found one where i could make out the words better mm-hmm. and that one just happened to end in portland which is pretty crazy yeah um even though there are no like real geography questions about portland it's all during that chase section right, like, right. you know memory match <laughs> part of it or not the chase that's not the chase that's uh that's the end yeah yeah uh but the um yeah, so like I didn't know a lot of this stuff, and mm-hmm. then the the final uh, segment is a nightmare, which we'll talk about. <laughs> um, yeah. The um, so like you know, Carmen Sandiego did a bunch of stuff in the games. This, this TV show is based on. This is specifically the world way we're in the world version of it. Um, she went through time. She did math problems. She did everything. Yeah, yeah. This is based on a very specific entry in the game series, uh, where Carmen Sandiego, who is a master thief. Her and her coterie of idiots go through <laughs> the world and steal uh, things like very small from, you know, like you said, George mm-hmm. Washington's teeth to quarries. Right. Yeah. So, uh, which literally happens. <laughs> yep. So uh, and it is it is your job uh, not just to find out where they are, but to kind of like go on this worldwide chase with this really cool like dick tracy cold war spy aesthetic too. all this theming stuff is so fucking good. it's so good like yeah i want to i want to live in the set <laughs> for the show so badly yes um so the genesis of the show like we'll, we'll just talk about the set here in, in a moment like the genesis of it um came because there was a study and this is i guarantee still absolutely true 100 oh, like, the world needs a carmen san diego now yeah. um that american kids including this american kid 38 year old kid <laughs> gary butterfield yeah knows jack shit about geography right right like, Kids couldn't find the USR, USSR on the map at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, kids couldn't find the, you know, uh, <laughs> the biggest country or the Pacific yeah. Ocean, the biggest the Pacific ocean. ocean. Yeah, the biggest ocean. Like, just couldn't name them. 
<laughs> and it's like they, people were just like, this is fucked up. Like, we have to do this. And that element of like service that runs through this whole thing, you know, of like good hearted service mm-hmm. to a greater good is like really, really um, gives me positive feelings towards this. Like, yeah, it feels like the genesis of this was to educate and kind of help with this, this almost like not crisis, but this, this just kind of sad fact. That's I mean, correct. The sad fact. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. Right. And, you know, just it sucks to not be aware of the world at large around you, you know? Yeah, we, they should do a game show that's for the fact that public, te- you know, school teachers have to buy their own supplies. Yes. <laughs> that, like, let's 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 do all the national embarrassments and make a where, <laughs> like, where in my fucking endocrine system is Carmen San Diego and why <laughs> is or is my medication not paid for, for that stuff? <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. Um, but it's, so just the, um, the, 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 the constructiveness of this, the positivity of it, I think that goes along with the fact that it is really, really information dense, pretty yeah. much like, like, you know, but both of these things that we're going to talk about, they are full of facts, right? Yeah. Like they will say the name of a thing and then give the context for it and give like either why this is important or tell you something kind of cool about it, but not in mm-hmm. the way that like talks down to you, you know? And. And th- that is the emphasis, like so yeah. much so that they repeat them. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if this were a game show first and an edu- education product second, when they're uh, kind of doing the narrative that has the clues, the host wouldn't just repeat them. Mm-hmm. Like, he's it's very much like, hey, this is the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a good teacher might do. Mm-hmm. You know, like try, try to get you hooked, but then also just be like, this is the take. This is what's going to be on the test. Yeah. In, you know, a cynical way, but also this is the important kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, it is kind of a narrative based uh, quiz show. I, I can't think of anything else like this where no, the no. whole like the whole first round is present like like everything connects. It's not just a list of questions, like there are new people coming in, new characters, like just it is presented as a story and the and the kids at their little podiums are asked to kind of fill in these details. Yep. And it's like they're role playing. Yeah. In it as well. Like they are part of it's like an interactive theater thing almost. You know, yeah. it's it's there's not it's not quite that far, but like to be the kid, like you get when you join this kid, like it, you know, you're you are acne agents, um, little gumshoes, mm-hmm. and you get to dress as them. You dress as these like awesome, you know, nineteen <laughs> twenties detective call a Cthulhu investigator outfits. <laughs> uh, we're know? in the cosmos. We're in the yeah, dreamlands yeah. as Carmen San Diego. <laughs> we're in the dreamlands as Carmen. <laughs> I, I, I would I'm pretty into that that's actually a very funny idea for like a one-off call of cthulhu campaign that i yeah. should do because i don't think anyone in my game group play or listens to this show so <laughs> the um that would be a really fun that's a really phenomenal idea um the uh so like it's down to the the set design and stuff so it's not just you know the chief and the host um and rockapella which we'll definitely we're going to spend about 40 mm, minutes on rockapella yeah. um not just that but also like this back alley that they come in through before they go into the game, the host yeah. place proper, like all the set design. Mm-hmm. Um, this was shot. Uh, in, it's in city hall in New York, I think. What? Something like that. Um, yeah, I saw this. Like, where is my, where are my fucking, I thought camps? it was out of like Pittsburgh or something like all that PBS stuff was. Where is that? You, 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 uh, you vamp for a second while I look this up. Yeah, I'll vamp. It's, it's just, it's great. Like, it, you know, like the, the set is done very well. They, they cut to the audience, which is all full of kids. And like, even the, even the studio, like, seems kind of small and intimate. But like, the set itself is almost like, um, like, <laughs> like something out of a film noir or something. Like, it, it just, it, it looks like a shitty detective's office. Yeah, I don't know where I got City Hall, but it was shot in New York City. It's, it's okay. taped in New York City at Lifetime Studios. Okay. I think I might have been reading two things at once, mm. which is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, I should have had a game show teach me not to do. <laughs> right. Because it, it, it's a good way to repeat misinformation. Well, you got two eyes. Like, mm. Yeah, I got two eyes. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I'm the anti-Carmen San Diego going around <laughs> spreading dumb facts and, and wildness, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, yeah. um, the, uh, so it was, it was shot in this, like, this really, really great little, like, again, kind of kids cartoon version of a noir. Yeah. You know, which I love. Mm-hmm absolutely love yeah um the, uh, there's a host named greg lee yeah can take her leave greg yep he's fine yep um he's a little bit like uncle joey from uh full house as he's, far as his uh body shape and, and face he's got strong joey energy yeah yep big joey energy big yeah. uncle joey energy <laughs> um the uh and he's fine he's a he keeps it moving i feel like is his job yeah yeah you know, he's not like he's not really there necessarily to have as much fun. Like he keeps it lighthearted and good. Like mm-hmm. I like him, but yeah. he's not he's not the star or anything. Um, no, he gives clues. 
Um, he is the person, the point person for any of, they have like an open door policy. So any vagrants that want to walk in and like <laughs> chat to these kids, like he's, he gets to kind of bounce them. You any, know? Any, any splinter cell off of the rock, the rockapella collective. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like he, any, any of those, those guys who want to come in and uh, get a little bit of extra, you know, money from the union, a little bit more sag, sag bucks. Um, he, uh, he I need, I need some sag bucks because my ex-wife is bucks. after my money. <laughs> Give me some sag bucks. I got, I got a speaking line this episode. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so he kind of hangs out and does that. Um, there are the kids, uh, and they get their own little intro where they get to be like talking on a phone or writing in a notepad or something. Super cool. Uh -huh. Um, they are awesome nerds. Yes. I, I want great success for all of them. They're like such dweebs. <laughs> I just, I just love them. And then, uh, the chief, man, the chief. Yep. Lind, uh, uh Thigpen, I think. Thigpen. Yep. yep. Who was, uh, like a Broadway, uh, a minor actress on the screen, but also like a, a Broadway, mm -hmm. um, actress, one of the, um, the episode I watched this morning dealt with uh, stealing the Tony Awards. Oh, nice. Uh, or the theater the Tony Awards were were uh, uh, presented in or first presented in. <laughs> right. Double, Tro Double Trouble stole them because I wanted to watch one Double Trouble. They were my favorite as a kid. Right. Um, and uh, she was like, you know, your, your chief dabbled in the musical theater. <laughs> and then they showed uh, uh, Lynn Thigpen, like one of her performances. Oh, that's awesome. From when she, and it was, it, you know, and she pretended like it was in character. It was yeah. really great. Right. And uh, the chief is a classy and beautiful woman. She has a tremendous amount of presence. Yes. Yeah. Like just amazing voice. Amazing. Just like very, very good face acting. You know what she's like? She's like um, like a lady version of Tim Curry to me. Like okay. has, kind of has like Tim Curry facial features a little bit in just yeah. the expressiveness. Mm -hmm. But like a version that I would like to either have adopt me or marry me. <laughs> Or both. or both, like it was, uh, me and the chief. I mean, she unfortunately, I mean, yeah, she passed. She, she, passed. she, I think she, she very did. much passed. Yeah, but like if you know the the seven chiefs you meet in heaven or whatever, uh -huh. like like whatever my heaven wish. Like I'm still banking it. I haven't decided. I've big talk, but I haven't talked about it. You know, said what I was going to do with it. The um, you know, really, really considering just like a happy life with me and the chief. Yeah, yeah. And just like like doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. Like going out to see plays, mm -hmm. like being being one of those couples that like instead of stocking up on groceries, you go out to the market and then just make food fresh <laughs> that night. You know, yeah, yeah. like every for like every meal, like oh, we're gonna go to the market. You know, yeah. no, you so go there, you come home with a fucking baguette. Yeah, um, you know, you're you're gonna try a paella from scratch and you're gonna mess it up and you're gonna order some Chinese takeout. You know, yeah, like ah, we'll yeah, get like, it next time. Don't worry. Like you know, dip, dip the paella uh, in my 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 finger in it and then like rub it on her nose and kind of laugh. And <laughs> okay. You're getting, it's getting gross she, now. I'm sorry. Kind of no, it's, it's cute. Like okay, it's still, this yeah, is right. all very pure. I don't know that we have sex. If we just lay in bed and vibrate next to each other. And <laughs> I don't think there's any actual, like, you're, you're, you're going to do it electric football style. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we just mind meld, uh, you know, until it's, it's just, we just bask in one another's presence and, and me, it's basking in grace and style uh -huh. and everything. And for her, it's like a real, you know, he, these are the, these are the fuckwits at the bottom of the Titanic <laughs> you know, like I'm down in the engine room, yeah. getting dirty podcaster energy and that you know, maybe that gets her off. You know? You're not even in the engine room. You're like, just, you're, you're there for ballast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm in, I'm in storage. I'm being shipped like a fucking vampire. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's she's uh she's just kind of into that because she spent her whole life on broadway just being like the right. classiest woman i can think of uh-huh you know the picture of class and maybe she wants to get a little dirty now that she's in heaven you know yeah okay gumshoe i want to find out if you can find the g-spot <laughs> yeah, the g-spot because <laughs> <laughs> rockefeller would be part of this oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. like, hey honey hey if you if you uh did you did you pay the the uh the xfinity bill the bill <laughs> um yeah i extremely uh extremely into the chief i love her, I love her. yeah um, no, she, she she is very good um and i don't know just to be parody of parodies of ourselves uh having two two women of color be your effective leads in a kid show yeah, yeah. totally rad like yeah like su super super awesome like mm -hmm. Definitely was meaningful to me as a kid watching this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was 11 and in DeKalb, Illinois, mm -hmm. not a lot of black people in DeKalb, Illinois. Right. You know, like I, I'd see them on TV 
and stuff, but mm-hmm. that was what passed for exposure at all. Right. You know, in my shitty hometown. So like, you know, it was cool, you know, <laughs> and just to have just be like so gentle and just like very, uh, you know, uh, just very wholesome, mm-hmm. like as a portrayal, like really good portrayal. Like there's yeah. no sensationalism, you know? No, no. So love it. Absolutely. Absolutely adore her. Yes. Um, also, the, <laughs> also uh, absolutely uh, adored. Yeah. Uh, uh Rockapella. <laughs> So Ooh, that's a, a fun portmanteau. Yep. Um, so Rockapella is the acapella group that uh, provides the theme song, but also does the incidental music and kind of acts as, I don't like the Greek chorus almost. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, like, they're the house, house, uh, the house band. Yeah. Like, like, like in the classical theater sense, they are the proteans. Like they, yes. they, they exist there to meld into different roles for the skits. If this were Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, they'd be the Geek Chorus, <laughs> which is an actual thing in Spider-Man Turn Jesus Off the Dark. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is this is uh, five fellas, uh, fun-loving dudes, <laughs> yeah. um, who do acapella music. Yes. Which, like, you know, no offense to any acapella fans out there. It's about the dorkiest fucking thing that exists on Earth. Absolutely. And it's, like, it, it, is, it like, is like the textbook thing that is fun to do, but nobody should ever watch it or consume it. I always just, I mean, I've said this before, but I always just feel like, you know, bands have harmonies. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> get a, all you, you know, none of you guys know how to play an instrument. Get two or three of you guys, get some people who do know how to play an instrument and make like a polyphonic spree kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Get those fucking harmonies in there. Be Bell, you know, be uh, Sufjan Stevens and take the, the, we roll by storm like <laughs> bands have harmonies too you don't have yeah. to do like covers of stand by me <laughs> you know just like hanging around looking each other in the eye like acapella groups constantly side eye one another uh-huh like you kind of like look over to like i mean this, so that, that's, I, that's how you stay in time because there's not a conductor please it makes it look like everyone like just like told a dirty joke a little bit like yeah. after they do it and they want to just be like you hearing this like we're doing <laughs> it we're doing it guys we're doing it <laughs> yeah and it, it's like uh, a, like how you know how else are you going to like yeah stay in time with each other well yeah, i mean like, there's gotta... a guy doing the drums well like, yeah I imagine but, but not in band. every acapella group no, <laughs> rock, not rock like literal drums but there's almost always a beatboxer or there's the bass like there's a rhythm section in acapella uh-huh. yeah yeah i, I imagine know, that's how you stay in time but but, but no just you know you you, you, you you the the body language is a part of it in case the listener can't tell i've i've done this i've done like solo ensemble at the state level acapella stuff in high school high school i didn't do it didn't do it in college but yeah. but yeah you know watching each other is, is is a part of it when improv is too dorky and white <laughs> It's time to join it, acapella. It was fun. I, I made a no, lot I'm of good sure, friends. I'm sure, I'm sure it's fun. It's just, it's just, it, I think, you know, as a professional video game podcaster, I think uh-huh. it is the dorkiest thing I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it is, uh, yeah. I'm sure it's fun. And I enjoy this, the, this, the, the sounds of acapella. Like, <laughs> you, been, you, you sent me a video. You sent me a video that was, that was a, <laughs> just a, just a skosh too far, which was them doing house of the rising sun. In, um, in a weird, like golden flesh castle or yeah, something. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I described it as being inside the candle from the Black Star video. <laughs> like, where are they? And our, our, the breakout star, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute because he, he requires some real attention. Yes. Has uh, like a mullet that ends in cornrows. Uh-huh. Like at the end. And it is uh, it is really special. <laughs> like, it's really, really something. Yeah. Um, but I will say, for as much as this is like the dorkiest possible thing you can do, mm-hmm. it is... Uh, a huge part of the success of the show. It's like one of the most memorable things, if not the most memorable thing. Oh yeah. About this show. Like it was just huge. Like it is one of the catchiest theme songs of anything. Mm-hmm. Like um, up there with like DuckTales. Yes. You know, and, and shit like that. Like it is so fucking catchy. The, uh, the, 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 the sound cues, even that they provide the warrant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like the, so much of the sound design is done acapella by these dudes and yep. like from a jingle perspective or like a sonic brandy perspective it's fucking genius that i yeah. don't think has been like repeated no no <laughs> it it is i mean because if you did it now like it would be very it'd feel a little bit dated yeah, you yeah. Know, i feel like because it is definitely like i feel like acapella as much as that never went away right it is very much of its time as like a 90s kind of novelty thing yeah. largely because of these guys probably yeah, yeah you know but nobody has even come you know you, you end up with like jimmy fallon that has uh you know, the roots mm-hmm. or whatever. And that's a great house band, but it doesn't have this. The closest thing I can actually think to this is the County Bang Bang TV show with Reggie Watts. Oh yeah. 
as the the musical presence to do like make up songs and do little stings and stuff. Mm -hmm. That is really similar energy to this. Yeah. Um, like Reggie Watts is the, the 21st century Rockapella. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> rock up, like I went down uh, and this is, uh, the second kind of Rockapella hole I went down because when I was 11 and stuff, me and my friends all love this, not ironically. Uh -huh. And then we became teenage irony fucks <laughs> and we got the internet. Right. And the, I remember the specific Genesis of me looking up the specific, uh, guy in Rockapella, um, was we were playing, um, Daytona USA. Okay. And listening to uh, Sky High, and we're like, is this the Rockapella guy? And do, do, we do, wanted do, to look do, it up. Do, 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 do. Yeah, like that. Blue, yeah. blue skies. Like, and yeah, I was like, oh, this is, yeah. oh this, is, this is the Rockapella guy. It's not. But I was sure that it was. Like, me and my, me and my friend were. So we went online to check it out as an online fact thing. And they were like, oh, the Rockapella guy, uh, the main guy, the, the, his name's Sean Altman. And then we went to Sean Altman's uh, website at the time, which has not changed since I looked this up in like oh, 1997. No. The, 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 the first item in the nav is still sitemap in 2019. Yes. So it is, this is one of the all time greatest websites. <laughs> that is like, a, no so joke. Sh SeanAltman.com. Like, yeah. We absolutely like with Wikipedia and Google. <laughs> Frankie. The Onion, I'm, I'm throwing Frankie, Frankie up there. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is one of the greatest websites. Like, <laughs> So every you, you navigate through the site through sitemap. What's new? Sure, Sean Giggs. One word, a little weird. Okay, Sean Anatomy, Sean mm. Discs, Sean Talk, Sean Picks, Sean Songs, Sean Press. All one word. Sean <laughs> Store, and it's subscribe, not Sean Scribe. In my head, I had turned it into Sean Scribe right. from when I was a kid. But you've got all these things. There's lots of little uh, Sean puns. Right, with his name. Um, and every single page you go to has a different picture of him laying down on top of the little nav bar in different, <laughs> in different, in different clothing. The Sean Natomy one's really good where he's like laying down with a, a, a doll. It looks like he has a Robert Smith um, plush doll and he's using the American flag as a blanket. <laughs> yeah. um, and this uh, essentially is about his his history, like his life when he was a kid. Sean Arkey, um So, so all, all of these, all of these puns, all these portmanteaus, Sean is doing a very good job of convincing me that he pronounces his name Shan. Yeah. <laughs> Shan uh, down here, yeah. we've, we've, we've got sh Shanthams, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then he's also got, uh, sh yeah, no, Shanicdotes, yeah, uh, Shan but, but, really but, 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 uh, Sean songs, that's like, that's swan songs. It's not, it's not swan yeah. songs. He's not, he's, he's a versatile man. Okay. Uh, one of these, one of these headings is just boy, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm interested in finding a place online to learn about boy, Sean, uh, um, teen, Sean, boy, Sean, Mr. Rockapella, <laughs> Sean Arkey. Um, so he quit, like he's the guy who quit Rockapella. Rockapella continued without him. Oh yeah. Actually, uh, my creative ego muse hijacked my heart and ran amok <laughs> with my brain and wallet and heart and hot pursuit. Um, so he went and, and started, so Sean Thumbs, Sean Anecdotes, again, um, Sean Eurisms, we continue. He's got a bunch of records. The cover for, uh, Sean Demonium, <laughs> which is like a photorealistic drawing of a parrot, but with a human Sean head on it. <laughs> and the just Sean Altman one where he is a sperm. Right. Did one over and one up. Did you do, how did we miss this one yesterday? Oh, um, I don't, we, we did a whole episode in text on Slack. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is all. Alt.mania is the name of this album. Okay. The back cover is a pregnant woman who is giving birth to a baby or has a baby. It's a cutaway. Oh God. Where it has a baby with his adult head on it. And then the cover is a bunch of sperms with Sean Altman's head and one of them headbutting the egg <laughs> with, a, with a smile on his face that cannot be described. Um, <laughs> this is. And then the nav bar on top is him doing a fucking crunch. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best fucking website I've ever seen in my life. Like, um, it is super good. I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at this here. Some of these song titles: "Dick About Me," "Unhappy Anniversary," "Too Old and Too Ugly." Oh, buddy, <laughs> are, are you a man? Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's he's. Uh, over, I'm gonna listen. To, uh, the end is it's over and done. <laughs> Poor Sean. Um. <laughs> So there's, there's Sean talk. There's a big section of, uh, well, you think there'd be a big section of Q and a, uh -huh. um, but you can ask whatever questions you want. And then there's an answer section that is two <laughs> uh, questions. Yes. Um, Oh, this is interesting. I didn't know that he, so it looks like he was thanked on the, uh, the, they might be giant side project, uh, monopuff album. Yes, he was pretty interesting. 
That's interesting. Um, yeah, he used to play with uh, one of their side projects. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, one of one of these uh, Sean Query and response uh, under Sean Talk. Um, all right, man, Sean Demo Neum fucking rocks. You have the most unbelievable talent. I can't even describe it. Blah blah blah. Basically, fuck the haters. Uh, yeah. Dear Nate, keep the faith, dude. And soon my ubiquitous detractors will be scorched crispy <laughs> by the blinding light of my success. Is this game facts? Fuck them, indeed. <laughs> Hard and without lube. Oh, Sean, no. <laughs> Nebraska. Nebraska sounds like a very cool place given the beef, trade. the beef trade. It's probably oh, not riddled. <laughs> it's probably not riddled with pussy vegetarians oh, either. Sean, no. <laughs> Don't like never Sean cannot call other people pussy. <laughs> like, dude, you you like good God. <laughs> another like my warriors for lyrical truth swallowed in power pop harmonies i should continue my quest for pop stardom stalwart and brave tally ho my midwestern friend jeez sean <laughs> um there's a whole section for just picks <laughs> well, uh, i mean so the picks have you seen pics of him with his with his famous his friends famous friend? yeah i love the bill good. clinton one which is just a picture of him standing in front of the presidential seal yeah <laughs> the, um the one for uh if anyone wants to see his dread uh or his uh cornrow mullet mm-hmm. um, the one with him with billy joel is that haircut <laughs> so, bad. so and billy joel does not look happy no either. um the uh so you can go through songs you can see some press about him there's a store where you can buy his albums pretty much there's nothing uh too specific about that mm-hmm. um you can sub- subscribe not sean's scribe which is what i wanted uh there and then uh but during sean gigs um, we find out that Sean makes house calls. Yes. Um, find out how to host a solo acoustic concert. <laughs> um, so like this is theoretically a, a duck con goal. G- g- given his comments about pussy vegetarians, though, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. Sean might be a problematic. Face. This is 1997, though. Like okay, I would have okay. said that okay. 97 yeah. too. I think it might be worth an exploratory. See if Sean has grown and changed. <laughs> he might have. I, I t- tend to think of John Flansburg of They Might Be Giants as a good judge of character. Okay. Like okay, I don't think yeah. it would be cool with him if he's still like this, but maybe he just got worse. <laughs> you know, stardom just drove him drove like a lack of stardom just drove him more and more insane. <laughs> right. Um so uh you know, free uh, uh, fee is negotiable depending on location. Uh he lives in New York, so if it's New York, it's actually, you know, way mm-hmm. easier. He'll just go there. He has two sets, thirty five to forty minutes with a smooth schmoo, schmooze snack break <laughs> in between. Um and you can make it open to the public or you can make it private, yeah. which is fine. Um, what's in it for you? Great. You know, uh, direct quote from a kind host of our successful concert. Pretzels, $5. Beer, 25 Cookie, $10. John Altman doing vocal warm-ups in my shower. Priceless. <laughs> can you imagine, Cole, like, how much would you pay for a house where John Altman was always doing vocal warm-ups in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> like, how much would that add or subtract from the value of a home? I mean, is he is he chained there? He's always there. Okay. I don't know if he's chained there, but he is always there. Like he's yeah. part of the shower. Yeah. No, I I, th- I mean, it'd be hard to sleep, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, Extremely. So like, but it's a house. Like, it's still, <laughs> it's still a house. So like, what would you pay? But is but but so so do, doing vocal warm ups in my shower. I just I just want to go th- go through this forensically a little bit. Pretzels five dollars. That's like a family size bag of pretzels. Yeah, right? lots of pretzels. Yeah, yep. beer twenty five dollars. Mm, like twenty four pack or something. Right. Yeah, it depends on the size of the party. Yeah, cookies ten dollars. <laughs> the, like, the, this realistically, he could have hired Sean to like to perform for six people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, um, and just like have all six of them like put a cup up against the door while Sean is showering <laughs> to listen to him do, you know, sing, you know, vocal warm ups. Uh-huh. But one of these um, headings sleepover, I may need a bed for the night, but rest assured I'm a perfect house guest. I love that so much. I just, like I'm he, worried that Sean would try to establish squ- establish squatter rights. I, I yeah. got my A's messed up. <laughs> so well, you're doing your, yeah, that's the Sean spirit. Yeah. He's, he's, he's going to establish squatters rights. <laughs> Seaner's rights. You're going to do a, a Sean, which, uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, I would have a hard time. Like once you invite Sean into your home, like I'm just imagining, like if I, if we did this, like we talked about getting Buffo for like a duck con. Right. And I think during the time when we're just hanging out, setting up and Buffo is there, mm-hmm. like, I feel very good that like we could, we would be in such deference to Buffo that like, it would be a good time. Like yeah. 
he's getting up there in age. Like we'd get him drinks. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd help him, uh, you know? Yeah. We'd help him out. We'd like, we'd be like, yeah, do you want, do you need like a, a to rest or whatever? You can go to my, you know, I haven't slept in the bed yet. You can take a nap in, in my room mm-hmm. if you need to, like, you know, anything you want, uh, Mr. Buffo. Sean, I imagine us just kind of trying to work and him just kind of hanging around and, and making jokes and offering up anic- like Sean anecdotes <laughs> unbidden. It'd be like the human persona of like the nobody colon and then space and then Sean, <laughs> you know, uh, sings the, the Animaniac State song. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A, dude. Like he's, he's an amazing specimen. He's really something. Um, the rest of the guys seem pretty with it, even though, and this, I just wanted to, while we were doing our tight, you know, our preparation for this, I want to get my dig is that one of them looks like a uh, less manly version of David Spade. It's remarkable. And I like, think he's been with the David band Spade for the longest. Lost. Yeah. He's, he's been there for quite a long, if you think. And the, the, um, so they had a, a second hit, which they performed on Carmen San Diego, which mm-hmm. now I knew it. They have a song called Z- Z- zombie jamboree. Ah, shit. I which, meant to listen to that. It's, uh, it's like a, a you know, um, Harry Belafonte style, like Beale juice kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Almost. Yeah. Um, but it begins with this long intro from the bass guy. And like the bass guy comes up, he's like, there is an island. And when I watched them do it live, everyone in the audience was like treating the word island like it was a fun running joke. Okay. Like everyone, everyone, he's just like, and on this, and then every, he'd go, island. And everyone all at the same time would go, island. And I was just like, what? You guys are just all cheering for island? Like that, that's a pretty weird thing. It's, and it it's, turns it's out it's an cut. island. In, go good, Man- sorry. It's Manhattan. They're talking about New York and. Uh, kind of youth culture. It's very similar to the Tom Petty song "Zombie Zoo," actually. Oh, huh. Which is also taking youth culture, like dance culture, and comparing the people to zombies. Huh. Um, something in the water at that time, but it's <laughs> it's a catchy number, like you know, of course. Huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're they're very special. I love them. Oh, and <laughs> and the this guy has gigantic fucking hands. <laughs> it's the meatiest mitts I've ever seen in no, my life. So I I saw them you know, just in the in the episode. I thought that it was like a like, like a thing. I just I thought like, it like thought he had like gloves on or fake hands doing like a Buster Bluth kind of deal. Yeah. No, no, guy just straight up has ever long hands. Yeah, he has, he has big old poofy poofy mitts. Like when yeah. you look at him in other things, like he's just got like big hands, <laughs> and he's got that super deep voice, and he has this weird masculinity elemental. <laughs> you know, like all of these Sean songs about what it is to be a man are all because he grew up in the shadow of that fucking face dude's <laughs> hog like yeah. <laughs> every time they went to the group trough <laughs> to do a rock lp you know yeah. like it was every single time it was like move over boys like i got girl <laughs> and and everyone just felt like shit yeah, yeah there's, there's literally no way the bass guy did not just like absolutely emasculate the rest of the dudes in rock yeah bass guy slays yeah yeah bass guy slays fucking mountains of trim um <laughs> The, uh, yeah, so this that's Rockapella. If you haven't listened to Rockapella in a while, I recommend it as a YouTube search because it's a little cringy, but it's also just really pure. Yeah. Like similar to this. So. <laughs> Jesus oh, I Christ. I need to I need to close these tabs because I'm I'm just looking I'm looking at his soon to be famous Sean friends. What? <laughs> Sean Motai. <laughs> Which is crazy because when you look at his gigs, like he has some, he has some listed for 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just doesn't update his website anymore. <laughs> yeah, weird. No. Um, yeah, no. Uh, back, background research. I'm going to try and find Sean on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I, I would if if he played in in Portland mm-hmm. and it was like 12 bucks, I would. <laughs> Like yeah. that would be a hell of a duck feed presents. <laughs> I would I would do a trip report one thousand percent. Yeah, singer songwriter, father of modern acapella, Carmen San Diego theme songwriter, Rockapella founder. Yeah, <laughs> cool. So he's he's there. Uh, one of his tweets is, "Where in the world is my bruised cheek drum?" And it's a video of him looking old. Yeah, so that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely it's definitely gonna be like old guy doing music. Yes. Oh, there was, a, saw, there was a Netflix what? series of Carmen San Diego. Yeah, there's there's a Netflix series coming up. Oh, that's that's well, maybe like that might be good. Yeah, like well, we'll have to find out. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah. Um, let's talk about what happens in this game show. Yes, because we didn't break down the uh, we didn't break down the uh, the the different segments that they do, but the, it's very oh, yeah. you know it's formulaic, like a kid show ought to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the episode we watched is called "Give Me Back My Wig." 
Yep. Um, and uh, what happened is Vic the Slick um, was last seen in London, and he stole all the barrister wigs. Yes. So we learn a lot about barristers and their wigs. Right. And the judges and the history that a lot of that stuff went away. But now, you know, however uncomfortable or unsanitary it is, they still got those wigs. So Vic's mm-hmm. doing them a favor and, and Acme yeah. is trying to yeah. reassert the status quo like all <laughs> cops. <status> so <laughs> um, uh, but, but we have three, uh, three, three competitors, Noel, Clayton and Kristen. Yeah. Um, then we get their bios of the sports that they like to play. It's not um, Noel, it's Noel. Oh, yeah. Noel. Late... Sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, but, but we get the bio of the sports they like to play, where they've been on vacation, and where they would like to go. Yep. I watched uh, – the one I watched today, uh, they were all collectors. So Greg was like, what do you collect? And the first lady, it was like uh, – you, you know, little girl, you mm-hmm. know, kid, was like, I collect teddy bears. And he's like, and I understand you have an unusual ritual for them. And she puts them all in her room. Or puts half of them in a room. When they get dusty, those ones go in a bag and the other set come out. And then Greg says, I understand none of them have names. And she goes, yep. And then he moves on. Oh. Like, it's very haunted. (laughs) Very weird. That is extremely Uh, haunted. Oh, no. uh, And then the second kid collected pennies and has one penny that's worth $20,000. And everyone, because that's still big money for fucking PBS, you know, (laughs) they're not like, we'll talk about the prizes they win. Um, But like, you know, everyone's just kind of like, oh, shit, this is the richest person in the room. (laughs) You know, Rockefeller wishes they had (laughs) $20,000. It's also a lot of problems for old Sean. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so these, these guys just all play sports. Yeah, yeah. And the the the, the funny thing about you getting these kids and any of these shows that have kids, like you know, you, the, you don't you don't screen them for screen presence, right? Yeah. Right. So like all of them are like mumbling, and like yeah. not like not making eye contact with anybody because they're like fucking mumbling kids. robots. Is a lot yeah. Like I felt like they probably got a lot of instruction about like not gloating or not like reacting when they win or lose. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I one one girl in the episode we watched got a question wrong and actually kind of like you know, let her face fall a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. But it feels like they were trained to just kind of like take it as it comes. Yes, you know, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, Vic the Slick is is was never my favorite henchman. Like if no. I had actually done research and picked one not for Portland, I would have picked one with Double Trouble. Double mm-hmm. Trouble was my favorite. Yeah, he's a twin. They both talk like two Jack Nicholson. It's like if Jack Nicholson <laughs> had a twin. Yeah, and both of them walked around doing this like all the time. Like it was they're Trouble Trouble is extremely good. Yes. Um, um, Victor Slick is okay. Yeah. Aesthetically. So all these villains um, are presented as um, they're presented as like good. animations over top yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. There's about two hours of total animation for the series. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, most of it is them walking and stealing something. Yes. You know, and then uh, and then talking. Um, so the kind of this first section where they're doing the clues, um, the clues are coming in through different kind of myriad ways. Yes. Sometimes Greg just reads them, but sometimes like, uh, you know, there's a, like a bank note mm-hmm. talked and, yeah, and told yeah. about that, yep. you know? Um, and in this case, bite and scratch a cartoon, uh, cat and dog come in and rap. And I could, un- yes. I could not understand a goddamn word they said. <laughs> bite and scratch are extremely difficult to, to understand, <laughs> but it's good that Greg then repeats the, the yes. clues, you know, it yeah. is a golf state, it's rich in oil. You know, things like that. Right. And we're kind of just like tracking a, a series, you know, a little path right, across right. the world that Vic the Slick is going through. Um, there's a character named Scott who shows up here. He's one of the, one of the Rockapella folks. One of the Rockapellas yeah. who is a running character who is often like a corpse. <laughs> right. And so in this whimsical show about stealing, about stealing stadiums, why don't we have these three kids solve a murder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a locker room murder mystery. <laughs> um, he comes through as a clue. He talks about, uh, you know, it's Liberia. It has a lot of rain. It's the capital. Um, but he can't. Uh, he starts to say it's time for the lightning round, but he gets struck by lightning. <laughs> so then he is now like an unmoving corpse on the map for the rest of the episode. <laughs> well, the very end where they drag him off. On well, no, to, to, to where Greg asked the kid, what yeah, should what we should do with Scott? With... Like, oh, yeah. that's good. Can we he... drag him. <laughs> Yeah, the, kid, the little kid, the winner is like, let's drag this body off the stage or something. <laughs> it's really amazing. Okay, go, um, go and get me seven pounds of lye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get this kind of acid, not the other. You know, <laughs> make sure you get this kind of tub. Um, then we get the segment that happens every episode. So the lightning round is just uh, really quick clues, of course. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the chief calls Greg into the office. And they do a little comedy sketch every right. time this happens. This is a, a running 
part of the show yeah. and it's a nice little highlight for the chief yes it's it's a highlight um, for the chief where she has to put up with greg's bullshit yeah like, greg does a little shtick like yeah. greg is is a is big joey uncle joey energy um shows up and this whole thing is about her needing the files on the gum shoes mm -hmm. uh and him saying they're in the basement and she's like we don't have a basement and then he does that thing like austin powers does yes when he pretends to walk down to the basement in front of the chief's fucking desk like ruthlessly gaslighting her <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know but she doesn't see through it because she's the epitome of grace you know <laughs> yeah. and eventually she just kind of chews him out and uh finds through the documents the contest where kids like the show is weirdly stingy in the grand prizes but very generous in terms of like general prizes yes because as a kid, if you watch three episodes and you like write down the answers in three episodes of the row and send it in a postcard, you get a chance to win a T-shirt. So they're mm -hmm. giving out like five T-shirts per, you know, this this wasn't like a weekly show. This is a daily show. Right, right. It's on every day at five or weekday. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're just giving out T-shirts by the truckload. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. So pretty cool if you're one of those kids who got one of those T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, good, good, good to uh, good, good to participate. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, for the next one, a regular thing that happens, they intercept a phone call, right? Yep. Between Carmen and Vic, uh, has more clues. And then of course we get some, we get some good old fashioned anti-Italian sentiment talking yes. about these wigs and Carmen's like, nothing could stick in your hair, Vic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's, I mean, he's got super greasy mobster hair. Okay. I don't think it's necessarily anti-Italian. I think it's cause he's slick. Okay. He has slick back hair and stuff, but yeah, it is a, uh, just a little dig. Carmen San Diego does not treat her workers very well. No. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, all the clue, all the kids get it wrong. They thought that Cambodia had never been ruled by another nation when, when yeah. famously Thailand was on there. So fuck yeah. you. Yeah, you idiots. <laughs> God, <laughs> you absolute clods. <laughs> um, so the, there was, uh, a, there was a whole goddamn musical about it, Gary. <laughs> yeah, they, they should have seen that. These kids didn't watch enough musicals. Um, <laughs> What kind of poindexters are you? Um, so we're back. We're now we're in America, which is nice because this, this is this is you know yeah. our time to shine as an audience. Good comfort like, zone. Yeah, yeah, I know this stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, the the next is the, the state with the first woman governor, um, and there's a bunch of clues for this. All the kids get this wrong, and I'm really surprised. Yeah, or like, yeah. most of them get this wrong, but it's like clearly Wyoming, right? Idiots. <laughs> um, and then we move on to a section called the chase, which is this rapid fire set of questions about U.S. states and capitals. Yes. You know? Uh, before finally the end of round one, where they kind of do like a double jeopardy, yeah, thing, which, where they can risk a certain amount and they they have a good song, yes, and uh, you find out where they're going, you choose what to risk based on what you know about that. So they yes. are going to Oregon, mm -hmm. or uh, you know uh, that's where Vic the Slick is. So you bet bet based on how much you know about Oregon, right? Uh, so Noel and Clayton they go on, uh, yep. whereas uh, Kristen gets the uh, uh, gets the. Oh my god! The gosh. first consolation prize. Yes, which yeah, is the, actually uh, like a cool package of you know geography stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's a world almanac. Um, it's a a, a Carmen San Diego watch. Mm -hmm. um, it's a T shirt. You know things that like you could use in your you know they they and they frame it as like in your investigations. Yes. Like I want the childhood that this show suggests so badly. <laughs> yep. Like the, the you know just like going and like you know with magnifying glass and pretending to like you know learning but pretending like I'm like. Mm -hmm. investigating cool stuff yeah you know i want that so badly yeah um the second runner-up thing is the same thing as you know that comes the next and the same thing you know same basic prize just so we don't go over it we also get a world band radio mm -hmm. which i would have fucking ate that shit up oh my god I listening to did. like radio moscow yeah yeah like that's fucking cool like i did you ever have a i think we have sure we talked about this did you ever have a cb when you were a kid no that, that the only cb that was ever in my family was like one that was in a car oh, okay the no. crime cb or whatever yeah yeah um yeah i i me and my friend austin both got into cb radios for a little bit oh nice and uh we're just like we never talked to anybody mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like i am talking on a cb radio it wasn't that thing we just listened to conversations oh yeah like we just tune into bands and listen to like truckers talk and stuff and it was super cool <laughs> i mean did you hear anything did you hear, hear anything colorful no 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 mostly just like like talking about like their lives and saying hi a lot like introduction oh, yeah. actually yeah. maybe if we had stuck with it longer <laughs> we got that. yeah but, again extremely wholesome weirdly yeah. enough um yep. i would have killed a man with my bare hands to get that basketball that has the globe on oh it. yeah the globe yeah the world ball yeah you know which is what it is it's a basketball that has a, a globe map on it yes. that you can also use in your investigations because mm -hmm. it functions as a globe that you can shoot shoot hoops for yeah um she also when she does that when she gets the basketball she throws it behind her head and sometimes makes the basket and sometimes doesn't and the episode we watched she did yeah 
which was awesome. It is very, uh, very brave of them to have her do that take fresh every mm-hmm. time. And she, she, she did it and it looked, it looked great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. Uh, um, you know, Kirsten, Kristen, go home. You're gone forever now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're on to round two. Uh, which they get to by uh, this weird little stock footage film festival of people driving in aquatic cars. Yeah, they, they had to get there. I, I don't know if this is, you know, before this, we were just answering questions about places from the studio we're in. I, yeah. you know, I don't know if this is really necessary, but uh, they, they get there and stock footage was going to have to be like, that's cheap. Yes. You know, that's always yeah. going to be something that, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse, any kind of cartoon show is going to do some stock, stock footage stuff. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this whole round is all about Portland, Oregon. Um, and yep. it's like a memory test. They are searching for Vic on this board of Portland landmarks. And, you know, you have to remember, um, what is under which of these, because you have to find the loot, the warrant and the crook. I'm sorry, the loot, the warrant and the crook. The crook. Yeah. Uh, in order. Um, so it's just memory match, yes. but Greg gives you little factoids yes. about the locations, um, some of which exist now, still in <laughs> Portland, some of which don't. Um, the funniest one I was talking about you is that one of them is just Reed College, <laughs> which is like our kind of like hippy dippy liberal arts yeah, yeah. college that's exclusively for like super rich kids. It, yeah, it's, it's your Antioch. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's uh, and it's like, oh, Reed College. You know, OK, <laughs> um, you know. But uh, a bunch of these, like the, another thing that like was here when I first moved here is the 24 hour church of Elvis, which is a, a coin operated, like vending machine art installation thing that is no longer extant. He's real coy about believe. that. Like he says, yeah. oh yeah, it's, you know, like it's, it's not a museum. It's a, it's a machine. And then like the less said about it, the better, or I yeah, won't go that's... into detail. He made it sound like it was real smutty. It's not <laughs> like, I don't think it still exists unless it got moved. It's no longer in the same place. It was it used to be over kind of by ground control. Okay. Um, but the, uh, yeah, so that's, that's no longer a thing, but, and there is the world's uh, smallest park here, <laughs> which I have been to, which is this like tiny, tiny little like postage stamp, but it's considered a park. Yes. But it's cute. Mm-hmm. Um, or the nation's smallest park, but they, they go through and get them in order. Um, the, uh, the lady here, the, the, uh, Noel kind of, uh, sets up Clayton to win. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like Noel discovers the actual things, but Clayton puts them in order. Mm-hmm. And she, she's real dejected. Too. yeah she, like, she's she feels like she should have won yes and she might have done better in the third round because uh clayton uh spoiler really <laughs> fucking screws the pooch on this he, third he, round he biffs it it was it was like when you tried <laughs> yeah. to name all, all of the all yeah. of the uh, mega, man mega man villains it's it's like or if i tried to do this <laughs> he did as well as i could like no joke like i i can't i don't know what these so we'll get to the third round uh, i, I, I would murder there. that today you think so oh yeah Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I want to see you do it, because I think just naming these things by the shape or like finding these things by the shape is extremely difficult. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. In Asia, even. Yeah. You think you like the, the same one he would have done? You think you would have you would have been able to get eight of those in 45 seconds? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, I would no. want to see it. <laughs> like, not that I don't, you know, just because it, it's not because I don't believe that, you know, you do well on it. Mm hmm. But I just think the forty it's it's very difficult. Yeah, but so 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 Clayton biffs it and then Greg says, Oh yeah, this is you know, like the, this is the hardest one or something like or I'd I'd, mm-hmm. I'd have the hardest one. Harder than Africa? Man, I Africa can't, would I, be difficult. I, I can't do Africa for shit. I think that Africa has more like there's there's a bunch of big countries. You know, in Africa. So you just kinda have to name the you know, know oh, what those are. There's not as many like small, like little wiggly numbers. You get you get over by Sierra Leone or yeah, to Sierra Leone, it gets real it gets real bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like they're probably fairly similar yeah. as far as like wiggliness potential, mm-hmm. you know, um, when Clayton wins, he gets to put Vic the Slick in jail by pulling a chain, which has to be the most satisfying thing in the fucking universe. <laughs> yeah. And he, uh, so, so Noel wins the travel kit with the world band radio, yeah. the chief, you know, sends her off. And I love how positive it is. The chief is just like, you know, you were instrumental. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have caught him. Right. Right. You know, in the, in the magic circle, that is this game. You are a fucking champ. You have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> right. Um, in fact, it's really weird that as we get closer to the crook, we're sending people home. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps there's corruption on the force. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is, yeah. Um, so and, and what I think is kind of a sad thing is, so you get to early on, it was anywhere in the United States. Later, it became anywhere in North America. You can mm-hmm. travel to, yeah. they'd give you a, a ticket to it. And that's, that's your grand prize. I think it's kind of sad because you write down where you want to go, but it does not get revealed or anything unless you win. Right. So I was thinking about the the dumpster behind the Carmen San Diego studio where it's just full of kids' dreams where they didn't get to go. 
<laughs> like it's literally little kid handwriting writing the place they most want to visit hawaii and just a big fucking pile of them <laughs> you know because like a lot of people failed this like yeah this show didn't have the budget to be given out fucking trips left and right right you know so like this is specifically like i i mean people maybe it's just me like people listening can say how hard they think this is i think it is very hard um and a lot of people failed it on the show. Yes. Um, and it's very stressful to watch them do it. So so yeah. the, uh, I, I, <laughs> I was entranced with this because in my head, I thought this was far more technically, um, you, you know, sophisticated than it actually is. So mm-hmm. what's happening is um, on the studio floor, they've got a big map of a particular continent. OK. And Greg is basically just naming a country um, and the kid has to grab like this post kind of thing right yeah. and stand it on whatever country is uh called out the countries are not are not labeled in my head i thought there were like electric sensors or something like that I'm like fuck you no there was a line producer who was just watching and pressing the yes or no button <laughs> yeah yeah and you get two tries and if you don't get it you have to put it back yes. and you have to get eight of them in 45 seconds they up that it used to be seven in the first season so mm-hmm. that's where i can tell they're kind of adjusting based on budget it feels like yes and that's just very difficult like 45 seconds to kind of run out and put them on these things. If you miss one of them, you know, where you have to kind of come back and you miss a clue and you have to go back. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, one eighth of your time gone, mm-hmm. probably. So it, there's not very much margin for error. You're also conceptualizing, like, you're looking at the map, not in a way that we look at maps. Yes. Like, you're standing on it and just seeing, like, a bunch of different color abstract shapes and trying to remember your globe knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, that you have as a kid. You don't know which continent you get. Right. Uh, for this, you know, imagine like, and again, probably projecting for me, I would just be like, you know, come on, like, you know, Europe. Oh, yeah. What, what? Like, I feel like I would <laughs> have a come pretty on. good chance of doing Europe. Yeah. In this um, South America, Africa, Asia, no way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So South America would be would, would, would be second for me. Mm. yeah no it, it, um, it's <laughs> and when i when i was their age like the the fact that these kids get any of them at all is pretty good again because given their peer group most of them can't find the soviet union most kids today cannot find the soviet union it doesn't appear on a map yeah um yep but yeah no well, they, but, they actually do after so after clayton fucking screws the pooch on this <laughs> um he only gets one right right you know that that's it um, he win. You know, he gets his consolation prize, which is everything else includes a portable CD player and some CDs from around the world, including Rockapella, mm-hmm. which is you know hell yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, they they go out at the end. They look out. The camera pans out to the the ceiling, and they point to it and go, "Do it, Rockapella!" And then Rockapella <laughs> come out and do it. Yep. <laughs> and uh, but they say like you know every all the geographic information in this was correct based at the time it was filmed. Yes. Um, because of stuff like the USSR. Yeah. Yep, because maps are fluid in a real fascinating way. Yeah, which makes geography a weird, stu- you know, thing on its own. Mm-hmm. Like the things to, to, to study. Yep. Um, that's why this is good. That's not purely geography. Um, so Rockapella does it. We learn all about, you know, viewers like you <laughs> of that course. support programming like uh, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. Also, I it think is, that it's it's sponsored by Toyota or something like that. It is, yeah, Toyota. And then, but specifically, um, it's... Carmen San Diego's henchman or something like that. There's yes. one where it's like, or no, that's the um, God, what the, like it's not the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It's one of those PBS stalwarts. Oh yeah, um, funds the her criminal enterprises. It says specifically, <laughs> uh, yeah. which I just love. Um, and then that's the end of the most like pure experience on earth. That uh, <laughs> you know, touched you know tons of children's lives and is just like amazingly good and a great adaptation actually. Oh, fantastic! Like in many adaptation. ways, a better game than the actual original computer game because it doesn't come with the answer key, mm-hmm. you know, like the, yeah. uh, the other one, which is neat, but it is just kind of like, can, you know, it's an open book test. Yes. Yeah. This is just a regular test. Yeah. Um, and it's incredibly heightened too. Like yep. I can't, I just, I can't, ima- I can't even imagine being in those kids shoes, just how, how distracting all of the rockapella ghosts running around are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah um it's just incredibly good incredibly entertaining incredibly heightened yeah yeah good good stuff on our on on our two dimensions good product yes also good adaptation absolutely yep love it uh less successful is the cartoon yes that came a lot later yeah uh so where on earth is carmen san diego um uh, which is a very disappointing title It, it does not have the scansion 
that uh that where in the world is Carmen San Diego does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Hey, Cole. Yes. What about where on earth is Carmen Sean Diego? <laughs> <laughs> Carmen Shan Diego. <laughs> yeah. Like thoughts on that. Like it was kind of surprised he didn't do that. Yeah. No, if you look at Sean's Twitter, it is mostly him retweeting different re- re- remixes of the uh, mm. of the song. Yeah. Um this is a Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> Yes. Uh, ran on Fox 1994, 1995. Uh, that is also like not the worst adaptation in the world, right. like for like a cartoon. Like this actually does a lot of nods towards the game. And um, it's still really information dense. Yes. It's just unpleasant. Right. Like I don't think it's a bad adaptation. It's just gro like kind of oily. Yeah. Feel like. like it's just kind of <laughs> greasy feel like to yep. me. <laughs> Um, so the, the, the conceit of the show is the, it's a game that's being played by an unseen player, which is presumed to be like you, the audience. Yes. Pretty much. Um, Carmen San Diego steals something very important and the player controls two Acme agents, uh, Ivy and Zach to get it back. Um, there are other, uh, Ivy Acme agents that could help out in other later episodes. A, a whole rogues gallery of them. Like a whole rogues gallery from other countries. <laughs> and is there any way that this is as racially sensitive as it needs to be? No. <laughs> Like, do you think that I, I, Billy Running Bird, the Native American Acme agent, is treated with respect? Ooh, you know, not, yeah, possibly, but I just, <laughs> I, ooh, you know, so, so, I mean, this this is something from later in the outline, but it's you know something that probably should be raised is that Broderbund uh, demanded a very uh, high amount of control over mm-hmm. this, specifically because they thought Fox, who aired this on Saturday mornings, they thought Fox would fuck it up by making it too violent. Like the rest yeah. of the game. So the fact that Broderbund like vetted all of the scripts um, probably gives it a higher than average chance. But average for the mid 90s is still pretty yeah. uh, abhorrent. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, you know, even and, and yeah, Broderbund in the 90s, perhaps like when like the, the rogues gallery includes characters named like Clay Tandori. <laughs> you know, it's pretty much punch out. Like <laughs> Clay the, uh, you know, hello. Oh, my, 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 my name is Iron Oven. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, you know, just uh, it, it feels like a little bit punch outy. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't take a very close look at that list once I realized that. Oh yeah, we're probably gonna only see yeah. one, and that's that's. We, okay. we, yeah, we only saw that. Well, this is the first episode, is the one we're covering. Yes, and I'm glad that we didn't do this as an episode because I didn't want to watch two episodes of this cartoon. No, no. Um, it's it's pretty boring. Mm-hmm. Yes. So each episode is a whirlwind tour of the world. Um, Mm -hmm. You go to multiple different locations, you know, following this series of intricate clues left by Carmen, who is personified here. Like she is not really shown in the, you know, in the game show or even really in the game. But here she is like this uh, er example of a gentleman thief who is, you know, just kind of stealing for the sport of it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like a cat burglar, like she gives clues. Yes. You know, like she does it because she wants to be caught. She's the Riddler. <laughs> right. Pretty much. And uh, we have Ivy and Zach, our two main characters, mm-hmm. um, Carmen, and then the chief. Uh, <sighs> and that's the big problem with this is like, I'm not saying it needed to be like this beautiful, perfect, classic lady, right. like classic lady, but it doesn't have to be like Max Headroom for kids. No, it doesn't have to be somebody doing a Robin Leach impersonation. Um, yeah. It's real and bad. on. Constantly, Roger, the guy's name, the guy who plays is named Roger Bumpass. <laughs> <laughs> so Roger, Roger Bumpass is the person who plays this. Also, the person who does Squidward. Uh, it's Roger Bumpass, but Bumpass is the person who plays the chief and uh, exceedingly annoying yeah. character. I do not like Bumpass. Yeah, and it, if it feels like it is somebody from the early VR age, you know, he like he's, yes. a, he's a digitized chief. I think chief is an acronym for something or other. Yeah. Um, but like he, because he is computerized, he has a computerized head. Uh, uh, he mostly speaks in computer puns, which not does not, puns. it does not support yeah. the thesis of the show. <laughs> it's a little bit like, can you ever think about how much harm Aladdin's the genie did to like kids entertainment <laughs> or just like adding Robin Williams and energy to like a kid oh, thing? Oh, jeez. Like, yeah. You know, like a lot of what like, um, uh, you know, Ace Ventura is like. Things like that, that kind of like manic, yeah, kind, kind of kind of energy. And, and and here's the thing, you know, get, get kids kids with energy and entertainment are kind of like governments with power. Once you give the government, once you give the government power, they don't tend to give it back. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's just yeah. going to escalate. So Robin Williams came in, irresponsibly introduced the genie into the lexicon. And then all of a sudden we got this. I hate that genie so much. <laughs> There's no, like as much as I would not go see the new Aladdin movie with somebody else's eyes. Uh-huh. Like, I think that there's no way that Will Smith is not an improvement on that fucking awful genie. <laughs> <laughs> like just, uh, yeah. The the, the 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 critic parody of the genie and Aladdin is pretty much pretty accurate. <laughs> I forget what they it's did. Robin Williams doing fun. It's just like Robin Williams just <laughs> you know doing it doing his whole yeah, like yeah. you know his shtick the, oh, the Tim and Eric version. But Black Preacher voice, huh? Again, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, okay, Robin Williams. Like we get that like you have a lot that like, you don't stop. <laughs> you know, I suppose that if it is just like I'm I'm driving a speedboat that is powered by by words, <laughs> you're the person who I want. Right. You know, it's like you were the micro machine guy. He's the the Fast and the Furious like Nitro I can add. It's just the, <laughs> the micro machines guy in there. But like, yeah, I just I don't like it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very sad. Like, not trying to speak ill of the dead. Right. I just don't think that that whole him for kids is really fucking obnoxious. Right. Um. So yeah, that's the the the, uh, the chief in this is very annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of energy. Um. So the episodes are fast paced. They have weird little mixed media interstitials that are uh, either take place in the real world that are not animated or just kind of like odd little changes in animation and pictures yeah. and stuff. Like if you – It's like a Terry like, Gilliam kind of thing a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we, we said that they uh, they go all around the world. They're tied together by a theme. Yes. So it's like, yes, you go all around the world, but this one is about uh, art. Right. You know, paintings. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Yeah. Um, and also about art is the fucking theme song for this, yep. which is stri- we'll cut in its entirety <laughs> right now. Yeah, um, so we'll see you in 45 seconds. Where on earth is Carmen San Diego? And we're back. I listened. I was like, that weird. That's I was like, that's that's a strange choice. Why did they why did they compose that like an opera? And then you go look it up and like, oh, yeah, it's totally based on a Mozart opera. What are you doing? Why did they do that though? <laughs> I don't and know. Especially in the wake of the success of Rockapella. Uh huh. Like I can imagine Rockapella maybe like this is them at the height of their powers, you know, yes. and they're not gonna they're not gonna seed to do a different theme song for this. Uh-huh. Or, you know, they're just kinda over it. Like we've moved past Rockapella. We're in the House <laughs> of the Rising Sun phase of our career now. Right, right. You know, but but the uh just choosing this, it's really unpleasant. It's like it's like choosing Wendy in Maniac Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just sounds bad. Like it's really unpleasant. <laughs> you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like um on my old my my miraculous archaeology iPod uh-huh. that, I, that I put together. I found um I have the old like 2011 release of You Don't Know Jack. Oh God! Oh no, iPhones, Gary! No, <laughs> which is like it's extremely good. Like it, it's like that's just a good quiz game, right? But those little the numbers, like the the question. Yeah, yeah. Themes, no, that, that, that like that's what I'm. Oh God, knowing about. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like one of the question themes. Uh-huh. You know, it's the same kind of like little genre piece of music. Yes, or piece on piece on genre music or what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really fucking bizarre. Yeah. So, and I, like like we're all good shows go to die. This is now running on the Worship Network. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Mark of quality. It's it, it's really weird because if you look at where Carmen San Diego Media goes after its initial run, like it, you know, it was on public television and then it went to like PAX and then yep. from there got even more religious <laughs> things. Where the good shows go when they die. They, to, they do go to heaven. Um yeah, it's a uh, it's rough stuff. Yeah. Um so let's talk about this episode. Let's move quick because it's not good. Right. Um this is the stolen smile. Right. Is uh, what this is uh, called. We start off in the Netherlands. It's super spooky. I like that everyone's speaking their native language. Yes. They're not, it's not subtitled or anything. 
with Carmen San Diego breaking into the Vincent Van Gogh Museum to steal just his eyes. Yes. So uh, she like cuts, fucking she... Stephen Root and get out. Like, <laughs> she wants his eyes, man. Yep. <laughs> like it's a no, no. And she, you know, I, I, like, honestly, I, I, it probably would have been better if you stole the whole thing. Like you just cut up a priceless piece of art. A lot of art gets defaced in this <laughs> episode. <laughs> Literally defaced. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the authorities rush in, but she zips away to her mega jet, apparently. But no, it yep. turns out that she just zipped up a Carmen San Diego sized dummy into yep. it to sacrifice yep. her mega jet. Yep. The, the Carmen San Diego real doll. Her budget's through the roof on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so she's back in the museum getting away right. this time. We cut to the real world again, like, you know, not animated where Carmen taunts us, the yeah. player, mm -hmm. and we're doing a character select. Right. Um, we're choosing uh, our, you know, essentially our character for the show. Mm -hmm. the season. We choose Ivy, who is like a plucky lady detective. Right. Um, kind of um, like um, uh, uh, what's her head from Jurassic Park a little bit. Yeah. Jurassic Park, maybe. I, I got a little bit of a penny from Inspector Gadget kind of vibe. There's, a, there's too much inspector gadget in this whole thing like the way that the <laughs> machines all kind of like kind of transform a little bit yeah yeah i've always thought that was really boring like i think inspector gadget uh just like literally eats ass like i think he's a garbage <laughs> um as a, as a cartoon construct like yeah i, I do not like uh inspector gadget i was happy that, they like, i was happy they rebooted inspector gadget as deus ex um uh, mankind divided or human yeah. revolution or whatever that's a good that's a good choice i like that yeah. version of it yeah. and i like it when they uh rebooted it with rebooted it with matthew broderick <laughs> that, that i'll stand for but the cartoon right a bridge too far yes um, um you, you, what you, you weren't there for the voice talents of don adams yeah i he's fine but it's not there's no there's no jokes in it like right. it's it's too it's too old timey and him like i'll just use my uh you know extending hand yeah like like all the jokes are just like what if his body stretched essentially <laughs> right like what if this thing stretched mm-hmm you know, and like you can get a little joke about the adult that thinks he knows what he's doing, but the kid that solves it. Right, you know? right. Actually, but that is that doesn't stretch a series. No, no. Like that's just that's just not good enough. Yeah, I think. And <laughs> but, this, this, there's too much Inspector Gadget yes. kind of vibe in this whole show. But yeah, but Ivy is competent, put together, voiced by Jennifer Hale. Weirdly enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, the chief is there and like we said, he's like, a, he's, he's, he's all glam. He's got the slick back hair, uh, doing a, Actually, it's not slick back. He's got this like weird little, like, it's like a pompadour pom kind of, yeah. He looks like Egon from the real Ghostbusters. Cartoon. Oh yeah. That weird hair, the, with the weird yeah. pastry hair. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but he's doing his lifestyles of the rich and famous and, um, Ivy is resentful because the player, he doesn't just want one detective. He's, he's, he wants to bring in support. And yeah. so he goes and says, bring me a teen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he chooses from the, the rest of them and gets Zach and Zach is such a teen. <laughs> Zach um, is he, Ivy's little brother. Yep. Uh, uh very zombies at my neighbors. Yes. Kind of little character. Um, you know, the shitty teen with an army jacket and a skateboard, um, just a real, you know, Bart Simpson right. kind of thing, but with no jokes. Right. Um, and she doesn't want to work with him. She, he's like, Hey, big sis. And she's like, don't call me that. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they do not want to work together. They do not get along. Yeah. But no, by the end of the it. episode, they will. <laughs> no, okay. Kind of. Usually you look at this stuff in media and it's like in 15 years, you're going to be each other's best friends. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 15 minutes, they're going to be each other's best friends. Okay. Yes. Like it, it, we're, we're working on a much faster time scale than that. <laughs> right but that that is what they're going for yes uh but they don't just travel by mega plane that is just for dummies literally yep. uh what they do is they travel in something called the c5 corridor which for yeah. a second made me think like are they going through a skeleton like is yeah. this a spinal cord <laughs> what are you I doing don't know what the c5 corridor is exactly <laughs> um while it's happening the chief gives us little factoids about the netherlands yes yeah um, and so we end up on a canal barge full of tulips. Um, yep. The only way they could have made it more Dutch is if that barge ran into a barge uh, filled with full wooden of, shoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, I, went, I went for the kid friendly version, but OK. Huh. And yeah. they're chasing the, the little side villain of this episode who's named Tourist Clace. Tour to Tour Classe. Classe, like tourist class. Yeah. You know. Um, who is this really grotesque little goblin? Oh yeah. Like he's got really exaggerated features and he is, um, the vile member that is concerned with art. Yes. Most. Yeah. Um, I couldn't not the tell. Not most explicitly racist, but he is hard to look at. I couldn't tell if his, if his whole thing, aside from his accent was supposed to be some kind of stereotype I wasn't aware of. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Like knowing uh, this show, like it, you know, it seems like it, but yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. Um, so they go to the museum. The curator kind of explains some more history about Van Gogh, why the eyes might be valuable. And the chief cuts in with this stuff, too. Right. You know, right. like it's everyone's here to learn. Um, you know, these are the most emotional part of all his paint portraits. But like kids are learning about Van Gogh. That's right. Great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then while they're learning about Van Gogh, a more interesting thing shows up. A little yeah. clockwork carbon in San Diego. Terrifying. <laughs> they keep saying, I have the biggest nose, but I might be lying like over and over. And <laughs> I think it says it like three or four times before they actually like notice it and address it. Right. And like just very normal to them. Yeah. But of course it explodes. Right. Because uh, it's a little kid toy. Um, it doesn't kill them or anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's a clue about a, a big nose. Uh, but uh, lying is lying. They had to go through this. At first I'm like, oh big nose, but I might be lying, like, oh Pinocchio. Yeah. And yeah. they actually go through this. Like they uh they cross reference in the crime computer. Yeah. Like, and oh. eventually they get the pun. It's a, a lot like Batman deciphering clues. A little bit, yeah. It's like, oh well, like what about Mount Rushmore? Like President Lincoln was our tallest president, so he probably had the biggest nose, but he was honest Abe. Like just yeah. kind of going through that. It, uh, his face and they, they do a real weird thing where his face they're like he was the tallest president at six foot eight. His face on Mount Rushmore is as tall as 10 of our six feet, eight inch tall athletes. Oh, I mean, they could have did. They could have just said as tall as 10 Lincolns. Why yeah, did they, that's, that's, why did they have the to point. bring basketball players in? I don't know, but they put a little, they say how tall Lincoln is. And then they bring in little like cartoon basketball player. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? It's a very weird, like say, and also like as tall as 10, six foot eight. Like when you can say exactly <laughs> what the number is. Right. You know, there's like, I remember in high school, there was like a, um, based on that, like it was a dark and stormy night contest to have the worst, you know, opening, uh, you know, lines in a, in a novel uh -huh. thing, you know, that contest they have every year, mm -hmm. like where you make the worst opening lines. Um, we did a version of that in English class and it was very fun. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. I remember that someone did where it's like, he was exactly as tall as a six foot tall tree <laughs> or something like that. Like, which I think is, is funny. It, it, r r r the state is exactly the size as one Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they think, you know, uh, no, nose lion, lion sphinx. It's the sphinx. Mm -hmm. uh, but they get to the sphinx and there's nothing there. In fact, yep. there is no nose. Yep, because uh, somebody used it as target practice is what they guess. Mm -hmm. So the Sphinx lost its nose. Um, but some henchmen show up. Right. And there's like a little bit of action. Like Zach can sabotage their plane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Those Zach people are definitely dead. Genius. Yeah. Like, like a lot of henchmen die, Broderbund. Right. Um, the, uh, Zach, Zach is, is showing his, uh, you know, still rotters run deep. Right, right. So. He's just showing that he has it in him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they go and loot the henchmen's bodies. Um, they've got some pesetas on them, yep. you know, Spanish currency. And one of them says, let's go cave. Yep. And he's like, well, what's that? Mm. Um, so they, uh, you know, they, 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 they're thinking, okay, like they find out at this point, that another crime is reported mm -hmm. that Carmen stole the nose from a portrait of Cervantes by Picasso. And the next, they say, okay, the next target's probably going to be the mouth. Right. Cave, mouth, uh, uh, they're trying to figure out what's the most famous smile of all time. Um, and the girl's like Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, like, he's so dreamy. It's always <laughs> hard to imagine, like, now that he's a leathery Muppet, like, <laughs> that, that was a thing that little kids might have been into at the time. Yeah. You know, like, thinking he was handsome. Yep. Instead of a weird, like, five-foot-tall stunt Muppet. <laughs> he is now. Oh, he's running. Yeah. Stop running. Yeah, yeah stop running. What, what are you running from, Tom? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to prove that your body hasn't decayed. <laughs> we know. Um, so they're going to go to, to – they figure out the most famous smile. They go to Paris because of the Mona Lisa. Yep. And um, they stop Therese at the, at the Louvre, right? Yep. He's, he's getting ready to, uh, to, to you know, cut the mouth off the Mona Lisa. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they, they, stop some, they stop some henchmen by rolling them up in a carpet like they're getting ready to dispose of bodies for the yeah. mob. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh, they are. That? They're definitely gonna throw them into the river. Beanie babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Carmen San Diego shows up, and they're just a couple idiot kids. Yeah. So Carmen San Diego locks them in a storeroom. Right. Where um, Zach tries to pick the lock to get out using a crown. Right. And it's really weird. Like he takes a crown, like a priceless artifact, and just starts jamming it into the <laughs> lock, trying to like pick it like an idiot. Yeah. Um, they also to try to get away, they pretend to be statues. And I was like, oh, this is dumb. This isn't gonna work. And then it didn't work. And then the characters call attention to it. And she's like, you idiot. Like the sister is like, you idiot. That wouldn't work. Why would statues be wearing this clothes? And he's like, you are, you are modern clothing. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, this is so dumb. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not a joke. It. Like at this point. Like, <laughs> so like, you know, I'm just watching it. And I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck these kids. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they do escape, and you know Carmen has taken over the world's TV airwaves, right? Yeah. Um, and she is broadcasting from inside a cave, and you can see these drawings of animals. And obviously, it is you know the cave of Lesko, right? Yeah. Of course, Let's Go Cave. Yeah, Lesko Cave. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so they they take the C five teleporting tunnel to the cave. <laughs> Um, Zach's like, let's let's get him, let's attack directly. But Ivy says, no, we can turn the the TV lights on these bats yeah. on the roof, and then the bats will come down and distract them, which will start a fire and will roast them all alive in this cave while destroying all of this, all this you know, art. tens of thousands of year old art. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ivy ain't so good. No, um, I, I, Ivy's uh, got a real Laura Croft thing going. But of course, Carmen, Carmen, you know, starts leaving once bats show up. Right, right. And while this happened, uh, she grabbed a canvas and left. But Zach. Uh, no, it was Ivy. I, or I, Ivy switched I, it out. Ivy yeah. did a little crude marker drawing of her and of of, of her and uh, Zach, and yep. that's what Carmen got. So yep. good, I guess. <laughs> yep. And then yeah, and Carmen San Diego is sad because she didn't get the uh, the real painting, and mm-hmm. she won this round. She taunts the us the yes. player. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then the kid turns off the computer, and that is the end of the episode. Yep. Yeah. Like an uncommonly boring kids cartoon, I think. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I wanted more violence. Like, it's not like, oh, Broderbun really wussed it up. And I like the educational part of it. But just the style and presentation and kind of the charisma characters. Yeah. Like, main characters. Mm-hmm. Like, just kind of ruined this for me. Yeah. The, the, there are lots of levers you can push that make it more engaging. And I think that the fact that they still push the action lever. Um, yeah. That was, that was a bummer to me. Because, like. Flanders action yeah like very flanders eyes yeah and you know when you when you look at the actual structure of it like it's a little bit i mean it's it, it's kind of a good adaptation in that they are following clues and doing this jet set around the world hot on the heels of a henchman and then and then carmen like mm-hmm. that structure is a good thing but like when they get to those places like yeah they learn about what's there and get a clue about where to go next but there's also like i don't know them slipping and falling down the face of the sphinx and then blowing up by blowing up a bunch of planes mm-hmm. claiming you know 13 souls on that great december morn <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep 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 yeah uh yeah yeah um you know fine adaptation just you know and we're not the audience for it nope i recognize that like sure kids you know kids might might be more into this i still think that kids should be into the game show though yeah like not i know that makes me sound like an old guy where i'm like Oh, kids get into the stuff that I liked when I was a kid. But no. both of these things were around when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. You know, well, just when, when you were when better. you were fifteen. <laughs> but, yeah, and as a fifteen year old infant. Um they, like I mean, one, they, one of them's clearly better. They but, ran pretty much concurrently, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, it didn't it didn't go anywhere. So I think that the game show stacks up. Very fun. Yeah. Cartoon, less so. But both of which are good adaptations, and Carmen San Diego in general is something I'm very in favor of. Mm-hmm. Uh, existing in the world yeah and uh i will check it that if that netflix show is uh you know the game show and has the spirit mm-hmm. i'm pretty into it the, the the netflix show is it's an animated show oh well i'm less interested yes so that's a bummer like if it was a modern game show like that you sign, sign me the f up but yeah 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 Sean's so, Sean's timeline for the past couple of months has been in ju- just him being salty over them not using the rockapella theme song for the for the oh, for, the, for the new one yeah yeah not a not surprised <laughs> by that right um you know he seems like he's not the happiest man right right that's ever been um that doesn't mean he won't play at duck con <laughs> we can make him happy yeah we can make him happy he's, he wants the 75 dollars <laughs> um yeah so we'll, we'll we'll make him uh yeah we'll uh we'll make him ours yeah uh, <laughs> don't if, say if, that <laughs> well <laughs> he, um if don't if he didn't want it to be ours he wouldn't have put himself fucking for sale okay man. yeah all right you know <laughs> um yeah so uh thanks everybody for listening to this yeah we really appreciate it we like doing the show we'll be back in a month with more adaptations um the only thing you can really do is uh tell your friends yeah if you if you know somebody who you talk to uh you know talk about duck feed stuff with and they're they're not up on this say like oh you should you should listen to this they do 40 minutes on rockapella yeah yeah. yeah, and you, and you probably want to hear that, and they yeah. probably want to hear that. Mm-hmm. You know, who doesn't want Rockapella? Mm. You know, d- Apparently not Sean. most of the members of Rockapella. Yeah, like <laughs> so some of the members of Rockapella are pretty over it, but uh, you're not. Yeah. 
So. I, I was pretty disappointed. At one point, um, the Rockapella Wikipedia article had one of those awesome little Gantt charts that showed, mm. like, who was in the band when. Yeah. Yeah. I always like those. So you can just kind of see. <laughs> just watch them drop off. Yeah. Like, like the, the, the obviously, the Rednecks one. Uh-huh. Which is, uh, which is pretty wonderful. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you in a month with more adaptation stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for your patronage, and thank you so much for listening. Umbasa. Umbasa.